go from there to Kanye. Mm. Kanye definitely uh, was yeah. instrumental in, uh, in bringing a new wave in, you know what I mean? So those would be my three. And Kanye gets a lot of flack, you know, rightfully so, but let's just talk about it musically. Why is Kanye West such a great producer? Because he's fully tapped into the spiritual side of music. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand that there's a, a spiritual world and there's a physical world. Welcome to the Kevin Podcast. I got my brother Seven with me today. He is an independent artist out of Las Vegas, but he is from Chi Town, so he's a little cousin of Detroit. How you doing today, brother man? I'm good, man. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Seven is an independent artist. He is coming up. Uh, you know, you hear him on Apple Music. His new single, Diamonds and Pearls, is out right now on all streaming platforms. Please go and stream that. And when you hear it, you're gonna hear them little three little uh I don't know what it is. It's a little three little stuff. I know uh it's like beats that uh uh Pharrell usually does in a lot of his songs, but uh he's not Pharrell, he's his own person. Seven, how you doing today? Welcome to Calvin Podcast, man. I'm good, brother. Feeling great, bro. Excellent. Like I told you earlier, just getting back uh, in town from New York. And we stopped in Chicago as well on the way back and then made it back to Vegas. So definitely wow. feeling strong right now. Yeah, man. And so you, you, you're a transient person, I can hear. And they say when you travel, traveling is like reading a book, but you're experiencing it. What do, do you agree with that? Traveling is like uh, reading a book, but you're just experiencing it? I never thought about it in that way, but most definitely that makes a lot of sense. Uh, traveling is definitely, it feeds your soul, you know what I mean? And who is Seven and how has traveling ex- influenced your, or maybe inspire your, uh, you know, your desire to want to do music? So I um, always grew up traveling. Uh, my family is originally from, you know, down south in Mississippi. Uh, during the Great Migration, you know, we traveled up to the Midwest and all that. So uh, we settled in Chicago. But I used to always take like trips. My grandma used to take me on trips, like from Chicago, uh, driving down to Mississippi, you know, to see some family, see my cousins and stuff like that. So I spent a lot of summers down there, uh, yeah. a lot of holidays down there. And so that was my first experience with, with traveling at, at a very young age. And I took my first uh, airplane flight when I was seven years old and wow. yeah I, I was uh, on a plane by myself and they had like the you know stewardess taking care of me the whole time it was pretty cool uh, I was coming from Chicago to visit Vegas to visit one of my uncles out here Uncle Terry okay okay Uncle Terry and so um, let's go ahead and jump into it so what's a teacher tip would you give out to there for people who are educators coaches or um, musician teachers, music teachers, what is a tip would you give out to there? Just, you know, just from your perspective on, you know, just educating specifically in the music uh, genre. Uh, I would say, you know, of course be educated and all that, but you have to, when you're educating people and when you're teaching, you have to let it come from your heart, your soul. You you gotta let it channel through you Mm. because when you're teaching, the energy is traveling through you and trying to get to other people. You know what I mean? So that's what I believe what true teaching is when you just allow yourself to be a vessel and a channel. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, it sounds like, uh, I believe uh, who said it, um, 
Jesus, it was a it was an amazing artist, but just pretty much when you're performing, you kind of let the ancestors take control, and it's the art that you're doing isn't yours. You're doing it in how? Yes. Yeah, man. So so growing up, you know what 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 who did you grow up listening to? What type of music did you uh you know first jump into? My very first rap song that I remember was the Men in Black song. So it was Will oh, Smith. Wow. So that was the one that I remember. My mom, you know, I grew up in New Orleans, so you know. Helicopter mom, you know, Catholic, hell, you know, I couldn't listen to. She called that rated R. You understand what I mean? Like that was rated R, Calvin. Turn it off. That's rated R, Calvin. You know what I'm saying? So Will Smith was my first introduction to hip hop. What about you? Uh, My first introduction to hip hop was actually my father. Um, The earliest memories I have is riding around in the back of a car with his album playing. He was in a, Mm. my dad. He was in a group called Birch Mafia in Chicago. Birch Street Mafia. Um, that's uh, one of the streets that we grew up on back back home. Um, he had a pretty uh, pretty good career. You know what I mean? Met a lot of people. Been to a lot of like uh, award shows and stuff like that. So he was able to to show me that this was a a, a lane to take in life. You know what I mean? So that's the um, the earliest experience I have with, with hip hop in general is hearing my dad's album. Okay. And then after that, what other, uh, you know, you know, inspiration, other artists, other genres influenced you? So from there, uh, I would have to get a credit to my grandma. My grandma, she, uh, put me on to the oldies. Like she wouldn't let us play Mm. no hip hop in the car. Like she was like, don't touch my radio. You know what I mean? Yeah. Playing oldies. You know what I'm saying? So that really got me interested in uh, people like Stevie Wonder and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Stevie Wonder was very instrumental early on for me. Um, I remember finding a uh, finding Stevie Wonder CD and I fell in love with it. And I just was like playing it on repeat over and over and over again. And then from there, I started wow. getting introduced to like Wu-Tang and DMX and you know, Tupac and stuff like that. Because, you know, back in the day, where they used to have, like, the the CD books. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. So my parents, they had, you know, the CD books, and I would just, like, travel through that one by one, just, like, searching, searching, searching. Because I, I fell, in, fell in love with music at a very young age. You know what I'm saying? Can you play instruments? Can you read music? And how good is your ear? Um... I'm really a very strong ear person. I can't read music. A lot of my family, they can read music. Uh, my granddad, he can play like every instrument. He wow. taught me how to play a little bit of piano and guitar. And I used to go to his house. Uh, he had like all the instruments set up and I would just go in there and just mess around. And that's when I, I found out I had the ear because when I would hear something on the radio, it was really a Stevie Wonder song, the first one that I remember doing this with. Ooh. I heard a Stevie Wonder song, Ribbon in the Sky, and I was able to listen to it and then tinker around on the piano and find the notes. And that's how I finally realized, like, I had an ear for music like that because I, I can hear something and then play it. It took me a little bit of time, but I, I would get it. So so explain that, right? So we know that um, sound is noise and music is organized noise right but we know that you know if you have a really good ear for music when someone says a c versus a c minor or c major they can tell the difference right just explain that the intricacies of just uh being able to hear a pitch and assign it to a frequency or assign it to a note just how just just talk about that it's amazing to me but just like like just you know you're the expert just talk about that a little bit more, the just the genius of that. You dissecting that song, like, yeah, elaborate a little bit more. It's kind of like uh, when a baby is born and it grows into a, a toddler, when you speak to that baby, if you talk in a very aggressive tone, they understand what that means. If you talk in a soft tone, they understand what that means. They may not understand what what language you're speaking yet because they haven't learned how to talk yet, but they know tones, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's the same way. I, I know tones when I hear it. 
so I can hear it and I can just find it immediately. You know what I'm saying? So that that really started me on the journey of like really diving into music. Not only was my my father and my granddad fully immersed in music, um, they still are actually. But not only was that, but I was able to to see other artists in the world and like start to find out different type of sounds and genres and stuff like that. So it it, re it really feels like my whole life I've been pretty much genreless. You know what I mean? I, I I had young parents and young grandparents, so I was able to know like all of my grandparents and all of my great grandparents. And I know most people are not not they don't really like get to get to see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like that. So I'm very grateful for that. But uh, I tell people all the time, it felt like I was raised in the '70s, in the '80s, and the '90s because I had young parents and young grandparents, so they were still partying. You know what I'm saying? And they were yeah, just. Man. It would tag me along to the parties. My grandma, uh, she would go to her friend's house and they had like, you know, down in the basement, they had mirrors everywhere. They had like the disco ball at the top. And I would just sit there and just absorb all that energy. So it felt like I experienced the seventies. And then the same thing with my parents. Yeah. They would tag me along to like house. And I would mm. just sit there and just absorb Listen. all that energy. So it felt like I was raised in the in the eighties as well. You know what I'm saying? So I love it. Yeah. So, so I grew up in New Orleans, and I always tell people that because you know I just I always got represent represent the five hundred four. But um, you know, I used to always go to Mardi Gras, right? And Mardi Gras parades, there's always drums. You always got the drum line, and right. I can tell you, right? I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best, you know, performer like vocally. But I can dance because I, you know, I remember hearing those like those drum beats. So there's any right. so, any song I hear, no matter the BPM. I can dance to it just because of that experience, you know, and, I, and when I explain it to people, they're like, you just saying that because you're from New Orleans, you know, New Orleans people, it is whatever. But besides I, that, I get it because Chicago is a very, a very, very musical city as well. And you, you very, uh, you, you should be grateful that you got to experience that New Orleans culture. I haven't absolutely. been to New Orleans yet, but I know I, I can see that it's a very rich culture out there. So let's bring it to the present real quick. So what's your top three producers, right? So I think producers are just like the masters, right? Because they, they so I think of Quincy Jones. Um, so right. top, uh, Teddy Riley. And then, right. um, and then the uh, third one I said was, uh, oh my geez, a uh, baby face. Right. And the only reason I said baby face is because I didn't recognize he wrote all those songs. You know what I'm saying? So I had yeah. to put them there. So what's your top three producers? Uh, okay, so there's a, there's a difference between producers and beat makers. I'm sure that we both understand that. So I'm just talking strictly producers. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna have to definitely go with Timberland because he just brought a whole like other sound. He was he was the the first one to initially just bring some whole different shit to hip hop. And I'm gonna have to say Pharrell and the Neptunes. Uh, okay. They brought a whole, a whole new sound after Timberland did it, and they was the next ones to really bring a whole different sound, you know, and, and shake the game up. And then I'm gonna have to go from there to Kanye. Kanye definitely uh, was yeah instrumental in uh, in bringing a new wave in. You know what I mean? So those would be my three. And Kanye gets a lot of flack, you know, rightfully so. But let's just talk about it musically. Why is Kanye West such a great producer? because he's fully tapped into the spiritual side of music. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand that there's a, a spiritual world and there's a physical world. So some people, I'm one of those people, I'm able to have one foot in the spiritual world and one foot in the physical world. And when you're, when you're able to do that, it's, it's, a, it's a gift and a curse, you know what I mean? Um, the gift about it is that you're able to, to channel that energy from the spiritual world to the physical world and vice versa. And then the curse about it, I would say, is that you are open to seeing a lot of things that most people don't, don't have to see. You know what I mean? Some people can, you know, see spirits. Some people can, can hear spirits. They're called mediums. Uh, Yes, yeah, so it's just a it's a constant battle going on spiritually. So you're able to see that when you're we got one foot in, one foot out. 
So it's not all it's not all good, but it's not all bad either. There's pros and cons to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the Calvin Ellen podcast coming through, just blessing us with a lot of just energy, man. I'm just you just soaking me the the glasses, are just mesmerizing, man. I need my own glasses, man. I gotta block my own shades, man. So let's let's <laughs> talk about let's talk about diamonds and pearls, man. So that's your single, right? So what specific elements of hip hop um do you incorporate um to create just a you know a thought provoking music experience? Because when I put on diamonds and pearls. From the beginning, it's it comes on, and then this is I'm in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving right, and right. grooving. No matter if I'm sad or mad, I gotta. You know what I'm saying? Just so, just yeah, man. What what are some of the hip hop elements that you incorporated? And just talk about how'd you make it. So already with the the sonic of, of the song, I was paying homage to history before me, which is the sound of. The Neptune, which is one of the sounds that really influenced me. Um, Pharrell, Kanye, uh, Ludacris, Missy Elliott, Buster Rhymes, people like that, I was really, really inspired by. So Lil Wayne. Yeah. Um, so I like to I like to every now and then, you know, pay homage, you know what I'm saying, to to those people that did it before me, that inspired me to take all of those energies and create my own energy from it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so initially when the song comes on, it's already paying homage, you know what I mean? So, and I, I like to uh, make music in, in layers, you know what I mean? So what I mean by that is like, the layers are like different dimensions, you know? I have like, I say about five layers that I can take it to. And it wasn't always that way. Um, you know, you start off layer one, then you add on layer two and so on. Um, but layer one would definitely be like just initially saying how you feel through music. When people start making music, that's the first thing they're able to do is just say how they feel. Yeah. That's all, you know, that's all like, you know, lyricism starts as then, then lyricism starts to get into like using metaphors and using double and triple entendres and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So that would be like layer two for me. And then layer three is when you start to take you know, knowledge and experiences that you learn throughout life and, you know, different perspectives. And then you kind of start to form a message that you want to spread with that. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's so, the, yeah, absolutely. Already those three layers. And then like the fourth layer is what we were talking about earlier. You know what I mean? Kind of like allowing the spiritual energy to travel through you and, you know, being a vessel so it can speak through you. You know what I mean? So you just wow. like let that divine energy travel through you so it can be shared as music, which is something tangible. So you take something intangible that's energy and then making it into something tangible like art. And I choose music and you know other things like fashion as well too. You know what I mean? So that would be layer four. And then the fifth layer will be putting all those things together into one and making it fun yeah making you know, it yeah that, that's the that's the biggest challenge taking all those layers but still <laughs> having fun wow and, and allowing to listener allowing the listener to have fun while still getting the message and the thing about why i do mu music in layers like that is because i can have one person that's on one frequency they can connect to one layer and then another person that's on another frequency can connect to another layer. You know what I mean? So it just goes on and on like that. So that's why I did it like that. So when, so everybody can hear the music and get what they need from it. And if you're really in tune with yourself, then you're going to get all of it. You know what I mean? If you just want to hear a beat and have fun, yeah. you're going to get that. If you're trying to get a little, a little message to it or some lyricism, you're going to get that. Or if you're trying to like, really feel a, a spirit out of body spiritual experience, you're going to get that. You know what I mean? So I put all of that into diamonds and pearls and it, it, it uh, it comes natural to me now because I've been doing it for a while now. So I, it's like I gained new levels as I've been doing music and now it's just natural. Like I do all that just without even thinking about, it. you know what I'm saying? 
So distinguish between paying homage and biting. So paying homage and biting. Biting is when you're distinctly copying from somebody and mimicking what they're doing. And paying homage is how art continues to, to, to go on. We all take mm. from each other in the art world and take a little piece here, take a little piece here, take a little piece here and create your own from it. Uh, Biden is just copying, you know what I mean? But every artist will tell you what artists influenced them and you can hear it, you know what I'm saying, in their music. But they yeah. also took it and made their own with it, you know what I mean? So that's what I do. So, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking you this question because, you know, you say that you have a, you know, a music, a very uh, extensive music background. You say your family was in music, you know, you're in the music industry, you know, you're you're in that. Right. So yeah. let's talk about the dark side, you know, in the, in the way where we can respect people. Right. So, you know, Tory Lane's uh, verdict came in. It's coming in, you know, and despite if he was guilty, allegedly, or he did what he did, you know, I'm sure that he is going to learn from that experience and right, he's right. going to get better. You know, we want him to get better. Right. What advice would you give out, you know, just to, uh, you know, just people who are in the music industry about having real relationships. Right. And then specifically, like if you have a significant other, the importance of having a union between a significant other. So you can allow that to be the power couple like Jay-Z and Beyonce. And even they weren't perfect. Right. You know, they had their own, uh, you know, issues, lemonade, four, four, four. Right. But they were up and about it. They, you know, they put their, they put their, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, they put it in the art and the right. art spoke for it, you know? So just, just talk about just the importance of like, you know, having healthy relationships in the music industry. <laughs> uh I would say beyond the music industry, just the entertainment industry in general, um, is definitely something that's very important. Um, you can be, you can be in the music industry and be with somebody that's uh, entertaining in another way, a dancer, a model, DJ, whatever. You know what I mean? So, I feel like it it makes it easier when you're an artist and you're with somebody that's in a in a similar industry or the entertainment industry. Because you understand each other, each other's plights, and mm -hmm. you also learn from each other. I learn a little bit from that side, and then she learns a little bit from my side, and we kind of unionize that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's definitely important uh, when you're in this industry, bro, because it, it can get real dark at times, and you can feel alone a lot. You can feel like uh, this person doesn't understand me because they they haven't been through any of the things I've been through or we don't relate, you know, it, it can be all that. But it can definitely work uh, when you have somebody that's in the same field as you, whether it be entertainment or, or another field, you know what I mean? Uh, you can still be a power couple in whatever field you choose, you know what I mean? You can just help each other along the way a little bit better because, you know, you understand each other better. Have you seen ways where it can go left? Have I seen ways where it can go left? where you've seen like uh, people's that may be in a relationships where, cause I can imagine, right. So you talked about, you know, the uh, being tapped into the spiritual world, right. In the music industry. And if you That's imagine if you have an ego, right. You'd be like, I'm tapped into the spiritual world. You can't tell me nothing. Right. And so we, so typically mostly men, they have a grandiose mentality where they feel like they can do anything. They can be reckless abandon, right? And we always we always know the end result of that, right? Where mm -hmm. I'm speaking more to the, you know, just having one, right? And not being gluttony, right? And focusing on just the union and allowing that to build you up, like you're saying, a power couple. Have you seen examples of that where it went left? Um, I feel like it goes left when both people are not grounded mm. um when you're when you're chasing certain things that aren't real then i feel like that that can go left and that's what diamonds and pearls is about uh diamonds and pearls is is mainly about like what i feel like my purpose here on this earth is is to save my soul while also simultaneously saving other souls around me you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in a song, in a song, that's what I'm talking about. Like I'm saying, I see, I see what type of life you chasing. You chasing the the money, fame, glitter, whatever that type of world. But that never ends well. You can't take it with you when you leave here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm saying, saying you, you should come fuck with me. You know what I mean? And and get on this ascension and and really trying to tap in and reach enlightenment. So when you yes, and when you have somebody that understands all that, then it just kind of comes natural, you know. But when when you, when two people or one one of one of the other is chasing the wrong things, I've seen it go left for sure. I've Thank seen you. it in my own experiences and other people's experiences. It could definitely go left. So both people got to be grounded, man. Got got to have your feet in the ground. And it just it helps the art too, right? Being grounded. Mm-hmm. Most definitely, because that that's when you get the most inspiration. Because that should just channel straight through you, bro. Like, and and life know. and life is a roller coaster, right? No matter how successful you get, you're gonna have your downfalls, right? But if you're not what the Taoists believe, and they believe balance is not a static thing, it is a active thing, and that you should always challenge yourself. And if you see yourself moving, you got to go with the flow, like the yin and yang symbol, right? It's a constant, forever growth of being on the left and being on the right, and you're learning from both experiences, and you're expressing it through the music. And I think, you know, the great artists do that. And I could definitely hear you um, inspired to do the same thing. Seven, thank you so much for coming on Calvin on the podcast. So Diamonds and Pearls, is that a part of uh, EP? Or is it just a, you know, experience that you just put out there? That's uh, Diamonds and Pearls is a standalone single. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. And so do we have some upcoming music? If so, what, is, you know, what, 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 what? <laughs> but with me it's going to be infinite upcoming music because I, yeah, I don't I don't, ever see, I don't ever see myself stopping you know what I mean because I'm always just so inspired man like I don't know I just like, like I, when I was two years old that's when I had two of my first raps okay. one of them somebody, somebody made for me and one I made for myself uh, I, I was just like repeating like my mama in the sky, my daddy in the sky, my grandma in the sky. Soon my motorcycle will be in the sky. Just some, I was just repeating shit like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think one of my mom's friends or uncles or something, they, they had me uh, rapping like on August 1st in 91, the little menace was born. I would just repeat that. So I went from that to uh, writing lyrics at nine years old. Mm. And from that, uh, recording music at 13 years old and then from, from then it was on you know what I'm saying so I don't ever see myself stopping so you don't have music coming from me always right now I'm, I'm focused on uh, I guess I can announce it's, it's a it's a uh, hip hop album okay well, actually hip hop uh, EP and it's going to be fully produced by me and fully mixed and mastered by me. I just want to really, because I feel like when you produce your own uh, music and your own beats and stuff like that, you really can start to go into the direction of creating your own sound. So that's where mm-hmm. I'm at with it right now. I'm, I'm really focused on creating a new sound for the game to soak up. Real quick, elaborate on that. The importance of owning your music so you can make music, right? So... Yeah, just talk about that a little bit more. So, when you uh, when you take ownership in in what you're creating, you really start to dive into the depths of creativity. You know, you can you can do the same thing working with other people and stuff like that, which I love. Right, it's expensive. I have two ways I like to go about doing music. I like to <laughs> go about like the first way I said, you know, creating everything myself, and then I like to to sit with another creative and we, we create something new with our, with both of our heads bouncing. Like, he, like he'll think of something that I wouldn't think of, or I'll think of something that he wouldn't think of. And we create something like that. So I like going about it like that. That That's the, the two top ways for me. There's other ways to go about it. You know, you can, you can do it online. You know, you can meet, meet people from across the world. Like I, I, um, I did a beat with a, a guy from a producer from the Ukraine. Yeah. And wow, he sent the he sent the, the 
the guitars and chords and shit. And then I did the drums, you know, and then I recorded a song to it. So you can do it that way too. But um, that's a new way. I wouldn't recommend doing it like that because like it, it takes away a little bit of the creativity and the feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Any advice for people that want to make it in the in- music industry? What would you give them? Um, advice for people that want to make it in the music industry. I would tell you to keep your spirit fully intact along this journey because it's a lot of like energy vampires in this industry. Really? You know what I mean? They'll, they'll try to uh, try to suck up your energy and mm. soak up your money and you know all kind of shit. Mm. Your rights, your masters. So mm. you definitely want to. Uh, be educated on what you're getting yourself into and understand that it's music, which is the creative part, but it's also business. You know what I mean? So you got to understand both worlds and really just know what, what are you getting in it for? You know what I mean? What are you doing this for? I know what I'm doing it for is because early on, I realized that my music touches people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have a, I have the gift to alter people's, mindset through music and really help them along their journey and their ascension. So that's why I'm in it. So you got to ask yourself, why are you in it? Do you think uh, musicians should strike like the actors and the writers are with the uh, current, um, you know, just their, they're trying to take their, they're trying to take their likeness, they're trying to put in the AI system and they're trying to put it in a box so they can just, ha- you know, give them a little quick check, but then they don't have their likeness. Do you think musicians you know, should do the same thing? One million fucking percent. <laughs> I think, I think our whole, I think we should do that in general. Like, just black people in general, our culture, we need to like, really start to like, get on it, man. Like, they, they was on it early on, you know what I'm saying, with the Martin Luther King and Malcolm right. X and people like that, like, right. and uh, the Black Panthers, you know, we kind of lost that, you know, the, the crack ep- epidemic came in purposely, you know, uh, kind of mm. fucked us over a little bit, knocked us yeah. back a few steps. Um, it did. It did. And yeah, they, start, they started to gain more control from then. And I just feel like, in general, that in the actor world, in the movie world, the music world, and just our world in general, we need to like really put our foot down with a lot of shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm very uh, passionate about that. You know what I'm saying? I think, uh, you know, if we just say we're not going to spend our money on, on this this holiday, you know what I'm saying? They would start to listen, like, wait a minute. Right. Y'all taking Because we spend a lot of money, you know what I mean, in America. Um, and if we if we take that money and really, like, use it to our advantage, I think that we can come out on top. Like, we are uh, always, like, we're going to, we're going to come out on top, but we can make it happen a little faster. Yeah, man. And you can be the leader in that seven. Thank you so much for coming on the Calvin on the podcast, brother, man. Please, everybody, right. please make sure you all stream his single out Diamonds and Pearls. He is definitely, 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 definitely going to be you're going to hear his name again. It's not going to be the last podcast. Where can they find you and what's some cool things you got coming up? Um, you can find me on social media, Instagram. My Instagram is X seven X underscore. FH. That's my Instagram. And from there, you can find everything else. I got my links on there to everything. So yeah, I'm going to make sure um, I'm going to make sure I put it in there. And if I got your blessing, man, I would love to have play your music on the uh, podcast so they can, you know, I can promote it and get it out there. Man, I would definitely love for people to hear the music. I'm going to buy it first. I'm going to buy it and then I'm going to put it on the uh, podcast. I appreciate you, man. I, uh, you're a good dude. I like you, man. I, I can feel your energy, bro. You, hey, you know. thank you. And we're going to talk after air, but before I uh, stop recording, tell us about the whole museum. Oh, wow. Tell us, man. I saw the pictures. The, uh, the pictures, I was like, yeah, man. And I was a late hole fan. I got on hold on Blueprint 3. That's when I got on hold. I was late. That shit, the amount of inspiration that shit put in me. Talk I about have- it. I have a whole fire inside of me right now. I know you can probably feel it. Yeah, like I do. It's, it's burning. It's burning. Um, I went there to Brooklyn. Uh, they turned Jay Z uh, into a, a library exhibit. Basically, his oh, whole right. career, his whole life, they put it all into an exhibit. You know what I mean? 
it uh it's it's called the Brooklyn Museum, I believe. Um, okay. It was just playing before that, but they added his lyrics out on the outside oh, of it. Oh, walk okay. in. Uh, I signed my name on the little booklet to you know to let people know I was there. If a hundred years from now they find that book, they're gonna see my name. Beautiful. My next to it. Um, Beautiful. So you walk in, you see his uh his albums all laid out, a bunch of pictures of him everywhere, all of his memorabilia. Um yeah, everything, bro. It's everything from his whole career is inside of that place. And it's it's pretty fire, bro. I recommend wow. if you can get out there, definitely check it out. Uh it's gonna be until October. So don't wait too long. Cause they're gonna take it down, which I don't know why. I was I was saying I, I, I don't feel like they should take it down at all. Like he's from Brooklyn. He does a lot from Brooklyn. He's probably the most famous person from Brooklyn. What? Why are they um, taking it down? I don't know, man. I, I feel like it should just stay up. You know what I'm saying? Why why not? Before uh, it was just <laughs> So let's see. That's why that's why traveling is important, man, because nothing's going to nothing's forever. You know, nothing's for certain. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's just how she goes anyway. You know what I mean? Everything has its time, you know? Yep. Everything has its time and every man has his time as well. My brother seven came on no Calvin on podcast. Thank you so much, brother, man, for just giving your energy. I felt it. I know they felt you, bro. Please stream diamonds and pearls. I guarantee you're going to hit it again. Here, let me uh, hit the thing.